and I was breaking my fingers trying to do it and I thought, okay, what is the way to learn this? I think it must be auto medication, just doing, 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 doing this all and all and all and over again. Which is why in every magic book you buy, the first rule is practice, practice, practice. Because you will be surprised what you can achieve if you try something a million times while watching TV, while lying in bed, while reading a book with one hand. And suddenly you got it. Keep it nerdy. Keep it nerdy. Keep it real, real. Nerdpreneur, you know I love my work. Life's a game, so I'ma take my turn. Nerds deserve to put the passion first, so let them rap a verse so they can now be heard. I am a small, independent board game designer. I wanted to make props for D&D. Correct. I'm a breeder of tarantulas, uh, importing tarantulas and some other critters. I am a harpist. I do mainly Celtic harp. Video game songs, um, songs from nerdy TV shows. I am a LARPer. I dress up in funny clothes and pretend to be other people and hit my friends with sticks sometimes. <laughs> Nerdpreneur, you know I love my Welcome to Nerdpreneur, where we have fun conversations with nerds making money with their nerdy passion and as always i am joined by my co-host frank hello and today we have a very special and unique guest uh we have Jonas uh joining us from across the pond all the way in germany right Jonas? yeah that's right good evening <laughs> good to see you guys are here in this case. Yeah, yeah good to see you too Jonas, what is your nerdy passion and what do you do I connected two of my main hobbies into something I've never found in a second instance all over the world. I connected my love for close-up magic with cards and small things on the table, close-up magic, with being a scare actor. I work in the oldest film studio in the world, in Filmpark Babelsberg in Potsdam in Germany, and uh, worked there as a zombie. And I connected them and a friend of mine suggested, hey, have you ever tried being a zombie on stage and doing magic? And that was the birth or the death, whatever you call it, of the <laughs> undead uh, zombie magician. Zaubert zombie in Germany, but I think for the English, uh, English, English circumstances, let's call him the zombie magician. <laughs> I, I noticed, speaking of the death or birth of, I noticed on your Instagram that your description notes the death with you noticed you noticed yeah I <laughs> and i was like i love that i love the like committing to the character committing to the this person died and this the magic began mm -hmm. that's the thought that's the thought. yeah so you're a zombie magician functionally right <laughs> this yeah, is yeah, this exactly. is this is how you describe people describe what you do to people you got an image in mind right now, I guess. It sounds awesome to me because, like, instantly when I heard uh, you're a zombie magician, I'm like, we have to interview that person. Yeah. It's just such a unique thing. I've never heard of that before. And you're right. I've never seen it before. And I've seen a lot of magic. I've seen people try and raise people from the dead. I've seen people do all sorts of weird stuff like that. But I've never seen an actual zombie doing card tricks, right? Yeah. So how did that get started for you? Do you want me to start with the zombie side of the story or the magic side of the story? Let's start with the magic side of yeah. the story. Like, how did okay. you get fascinated with magic? Yeah. So, um, it's been, oh God, 21 years now. When I was eight year or so years old, I bought my first bicycle playing cards. I'm still a fan of the uh, United States playing cards company, by the way, still collecting <laughs> those, uh, those cards to, till today. Um, so I started to, to get into card magic and I started to buy DVDs and books about it. And one day I thought, hmm. If there's soccer clubs and sport clubs there, is there a magician's club anywhere in Potsdam, in Berlin, anywhere in Germany, in Europe? I don't know. So I Googled and I found that there is actually the Magischer Zirkel von Deutschland, like the magic circle of Germany, which uh, had a few bunch of thousand, um, how do you call it? Members. Members, thank you, like a yeah. bunch of thousand members. And they're organizing meetings between magicians who are from 5 to 95, and they're exchanging about any kind of topic, like wow. uh, card magic, uh, silent magic, uh, large illusions, everything you can discuss once a month. 
and then told my mom, hey, I want to get inside there. And that was the start of a long journey because I started to network with other magicians in Potsdam, in Germany, all over Europe, started to go into workshops, youth competitions, um, getting a monthly magazine and so on and so on. And how old were you? I was, I was eight, but the, the, the more or less professional things started with, I think, 14 or 15. So let's make it about 10, 15 years to be in the professional side of magic. Um, yeah, I started to, started to dress up normally with tie and suit, like all the magicians, and started to practice. And one day I decided to do a little show for my mom's 40th uh, birthday. And it was great. I thought I want more, 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 more. So I started reading, started practicing, building up my own show. So till today, I got a few shows in a year whenever there is someone celebrating birthday or weddings or table hopping is also something you can not only book a show, but also for two hours. So the magician uh, walks around and shows tricks for little groups of people. Right. Whether it's summing up until today, just gathering a little pocket money with magic. Do you remember the first magic trick you ever saw as a kid? As a saw, yes, yes. I was in Berlin at a family fair and there was a magician walking on those uh, extended wooden legs. I really don't know Stilts. the English word for it. How, how is it called? Stilts. Stilts, okay. So he was walking around still and embarrassing purple glittery suit. It was, it was amazing to see him. So he was walking around. And there was gathering a, a bunch of people in front of him and he took out a pack of playing cards and he took out the cards and did nothing but facing them to to his face so we only got to see the back sides and he took out one card just one card and he asked my mom lady i want you to think of any card any card you like and my mom said mm -hmm. and he said what card did you think of and my mom said the queen of hearts so he took out the single card he had, turned it around, and it was the Queen of Hearts. So he got an applause, everybody was walking in, right? and I thought, how can these people just walk away? I was running uh, behind him and I pushed him on his, on his sleeve, I pulled him on his sleeve and said, is there any way for you to tell me how this is done? And he looked and smiled and just shook his head. And closed, <laughs> it, I, closed his eyes and turned around and walked away. And I thought, okay, I will never get the secret out of him, but I want to be in that position. I want to tell people, no, I'm not telling you how this is working. Um, <laughs> recently, I, 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 I um, did know how he did the trick. Actually, I learned it, but uh, it was a long way. This one trick will always stuck in my mind. Gosh, because I, really I love that story. That that that's like the the inciting incident, that moment, that core memory that just set you off on this path. And it's so clear. What's in fascinating to me too is that I feel like that magician probably did that trick to hundreds of people throughout the rest of that day or or the week or whatever it was. How many of those people who saw that became magicians? It feels like there's got, do you think it's like a, like a, a genetic thing? Like, are you born in this? Like, Ooh, I really want to do that. Or do you just have this fascination with it? Or like, what is it that you, that made you be like, I'm going to go meet all these magicians. I'm going to join and get a subscription to a magic magazine. I'm going to really take action on becoming that guy. I've always been on a dramatic and passionate side of life. If I'm interested in something, I want to read everything about it. I want to try it out. I want to know how people think about it. I want to watch it from all sides and getting, getting into it. Whether it is Egyptian history or how to build a computer or right. a Super Mario enemy sprite design aspects. I don't know. Everything I'm interested in, I read, read, read. And the thing that stuck most in my life was and is magic because there is such a bunch of books and techniques and everything. You will never learn even, even, even a split part of everything that's existing in magic within your life. And this is great because you can decide what you want to learn. Want to be a mentalist? Want to be a, a clown? Want to be a zombie? You can be anything. So I used my experience as doing, in doing magic and connected it with being a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about zombies, how did that uh, love for, say, zombies or uh, 
you mentioned scaring people. I don't know. I don't think that's not a, a job, right? It's, but like, it's kind of a job. So it is. Being a scare actor can be a full time job. Scare actor. Scare actor. Okay, that's it's, what it is. It's the actual. It's, it's the actual word for it. Um, I love it. <laughs> scare actor because <laughs> in, in in German it's just a schrecker, like scare, and uh, a schrecker doesn't sound like um, a scare actor. Um, <laughs> so the thing was, I'm actually in love with Stephen King. So I've read uh, a lot of novels, and the first novel I read was Pet Cemetery, right after watching the movie Pet Cemetery. I don't know whether you guys have seen the remake, which uh, released two years ago, or the classic movie from the 80s about Pet Cemetery from Stephen King. No, it's one I missed. It's pretty brutal. The, the movie is recommended uh, 16 up, and I was 12 when my father rented it for me. Oh. <laughs> to this day, I can't explain why I'm so fascinated with the resurrection of a dead person and how that person can change and is. As you can say, being passionate about it, I started to watch uh, zombie movies and uh, read books about zombies and voodoo and uh, where does it come from and pop culture and what did George R. Romero actually create with Night of the Living Dead and so on and so on and started to watch so many zombie movies. I was Secretly, I was an expert. Nobody asked about or wanted to talk about zombies, but I could have answered any question. <laughs> how, how there's different types of zombies, what they eat, how they can die, and so on and so on. And one day, a, a friend of mine reached out and said, hey, there's a casting. They're looking for people who play zombies, who act as zombies. I said, where? Now in Filmpark Babelsberg. So I thought, okay, Filmpark Babelsberg. Film Studio Babelsberg, the oldest movie studios in the world, uh, seated right next to me, and they're looking for zombie actors. And I thought, okay, let's try this. Let's let's try this. So I reached out to the Film Park Babelsberg and applied for the casting. <laughs> and there was this big room with a stage and around 50 other people for this casting. Being casted as a scare actor, as a zombie, I really had no idea what to do. I just went there, <laughs> signed my name, and I was number seven or eighth in line. And I got to enter the stage and I was called, okay, you got one minute time, play a role as you wish. You don't even need to play a zombie. You can play a vampire, you can play a Frankenstein's monster, you can play anything you want. Just convince us with your passion for this role. That was all I had in one minute time. So I got on stage and I thought, okay, think into any zombie movie you like. And I switched to, I believe, Land of the Dead. I got a scene in front of my eyes where the zombies were walking over the bridge, the humans were aiming. And I thought, okay, one minute. And I was starting to walk like a zombie, like just what I saw in the movies. And then I thought, okay, now I need to get something a little bit more exciting to maybe convince them. And I started to get shooted, all in pantomime. There was no other person. I started to walk and <laughs> one, two, one, and one, one shoulder, other shoulder. And I thought, okay, now I want to get killed in the best way. So I stood there, <laughs> making matching, <laughs> matching gun sound and breaking, uh, falling down and lying there. And, and I got the job. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This is a master class on how to play a zombie right now, everyone. Just yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So so I was just I was just doing what I saw in all those movies. And because I never took acting classes. I never learned how to breathe or prepare a role or method acting or anything like that. Never visited some course or school. I just did what I saw a million times before. And it was convincing and they liked it. And this year, I just got the mail recently, uh, might be the Horror Nights again this year in uh, oh, wow. Film, Park, Film Park Bubbles Back, which will be 10 nights from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. just walking around the movie park, which is decorated in all kinds of nice. scary stuff. The zombie, uh, the, the clown playground from Vampire Village, uh, horror fairy tale to the street of blood where the zombies walk with all nice. the crashed cars and nebula and so on and so on. And you walk there and you scare people just doing the things you saw in these movies. So a couple of years ago, uh, actually maybe about eight years ago, I had a Halloween season where I got a job at a scare park in Vancouver. And it was, it was pretty awesome. I really loved 
the reactions. I got to be one of those people. I wasn't in, trapped in a haunted house. I was one of the people that got to roam around a region. You know, like you were saying, there's the different. <laughs> yeah, you might try. yeah, 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 different theme. And there's there's people who who, who stand five hours on the same spot, scaring people. So yes. it's a great opportunity to walk around and head on holes. Exactly. What is it that you love that, that keeps you coming back? It is the same as the artist who grabs the pencil and switches off his hat to paint, or the person who dances or sings. This is my chance to actually, to to almost literally turn my brain off <laughs> and being nothing but the zombie. Have you ever experienced those days where you try to get along with things, but there's unfriendly bus drivers to people who are just unfriendly without a need yeah. you just get unlucky and there's this moment where you want to reach out scream punch everyone's faces you would never do that but there's some kind of cinema in your head where you and being the zombie gives you at least a little the opportunity to really do those things like starting to scream and chasing someone over 20 meters with a chainsaw yeah. or without a chain yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or being a bully to some people because you're the zombie and there's the non-talking zombie who just walked along <laughs> and there's also the zombie who said hey, get around you fuck harder and you walk <laughs> around and, and being mean to people but they enjoy it they enjoy yeah, it because yeah. they pay oh, for they that. They pay yeah. for the. They, they came for that. That they pay for the thrill. They pay for the chase. They pay for the photo they get afterwards, or uh, a card trick in my case sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and you and there's a rule. I mean, just to be clear, I mean you're not touching them. There is a distinct rule in the scare park where you don't touch people. And yes, and. For people who don't go to scare parks, they won't know yeah. that. And like listening to what you're saying, oh. they're thinking, "Oh my gosh, they pay. They get." they pay to enter this park and be attacked it's like no 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 there's no touching um and in fact like when when the guests touch the performers there's kind of, there are security in place to help make sure that the um, at least in my experience there was security that's that's correct there i i even think there's lacking a lot of transparency because there's so many people not coming because they think they're gonna get dragged into something no. or beaten up or something we get workshop, the workshops, we get rule books, we get handbooks with all the rules you have to follow. For example, never chase a person farther than 20 meters or anything. Never touch someone. Don't scare someone who is visually handicapped or uh, pregnant or anything like that. If there's a person in need, get out of the role, get help, get the police, get anybody. But you need to trust in yourself to never break those rules and the people get to trust you that you're an actor. They're like in a movie, but they will never suffer in any way they don't want. Right. What's so interesting to me about this is the parallel that happens between the scare and also between the magician. Because when you're a magician, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a magician, but I believe that when you go into an audience uh, and you're going to go to a magic show, you are, in a sense, saying, I am willing to allow you to deceive me. I'm like opting in to be deceived. I want you to lie to me. And very similarly, people who are going to a scare park are like, I want you to scare me. I'm opting into this. So now right. you're allowed to do a lot of things that we weren't normally able to do, like morally. Like if you aren't opting into being deceived, you're being scammed. Yeah, you don't want to right? be deceived. But if you are opting in, then you're at a magic show. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. sort of a completely different, there's just that one bit of permission makes all the difference in whether you're in the right side of things or the wrong side of things. This gets very clear when you experience people who get into the uh, Horror Nights and Movie Park, paying the entrance, waiting in line, uh, yeah. paying money and being the, the most, the most horrible horrible person human beings you can imagine like yeah. getting drunk beating the monsters up screaming around touching the girls everything and you say why did you come here what do you want <laughs> so you want to experience the thrill or you want to want to want to get into trouble because you yeah. can't get trouble because all the monsters are actually people 
But yeah, we got walkie talkies, we got a code word, which uh, switches every year. For example, I don't know, Sandman. If you say yeah. Sandman and the location, all the monsters gather if there's any kind of trouble. Oh, wow. this, is, this is really kind of family. And there's so much more than just scaring people together. There's this applying the makeup before and together the whole day. Um, getting tips, uh, looking for costumes, suing them, being a monster family. And that's nothing more and nothing less. There's also a very similar, as a performer, there's a similar audience reaction and the joy that comes from that. Wow, like the faces, like having scared, personally having scared people for night after night, it was so fun. And the most fun came from, I mean, getting to make someone like so scared they cry is, it sounds terrible. <laughs> but there is a point where when they cry and their friends around them are laughing so hard that you are just like, okay, outside of the theme park, this would be terrible. But <laughs> they all agreed to come to the park. And it's your good right to laugh at this point. Always yeah. be prepared for people who actually get scared and get too excited and getting a heartbeat and saying, okay, yeah. I can't get, can't get my mood down right now. You yeah. always get a bunch of... Um, like candy or chewing gum with you. Oh, interesting. Sitting, sitting, sitting down with them and saying, hey, I'm Jonas. I'm not a zombie. Hey, want to see what's this? Yeah, this is jam, strawberry jam. You can watch it. Yeah, pretty easy. Look, <laughs> you, see my, you see my contact lenses? Yes, wonderful. I'm a very wow. nice person. If you need anything, reach out. And then I get up and <laughs> creep away. Um, <laughs> because at this point, they, they see. And to, uh, about the, the magic show stuff, yeah. If you're cool with it to get tricked or to get scared, you're gonna have the the, the time of your life. Yeah. In this or in this in this scary evening because we are also human beings. Yeah. Mm. What what do you expect us? To to kill you, to harm you in any way? No, definitely not. You get what you pay for. Um yeah. you need to trust in that because sometimes even the best magic show can get weird or also boring or too a little bit over the top but mm -hmm. that's art i think <laughs> yeah um, yeah so it's the world right the movie yeah, you've the, got your... or the magic world where everything is possible <laughs> yeah i mean you've got your great shows and your yeah you've got the whole spectrum the whole uh, large variety so i didn't actually answer the question how those two got connected because there yes, was the right. there was the the zombie story and the magician story you want me to tell it or um, yeah how yes. did you get to be a zombie magician where you're actually because you perform as a zombie yeah but you're also doing magic just so people are clear on like what you do this is yes. uh this is a unique magic show you know you're not so, in like a full suit like a like a normal magician you've got like blood on your head on your face and like zombie eyes but you got cards and like so, yeah i'd love to hear more about that if we can cut here i'm gonna show you something wait a second sure, sure. he disappeared everyone no <laughs> truly a great magician it is a suit it is gonna be a little bit more authentic that is my uh, zombie dress <laughs> with a flower and this is this is like a uh, metal uh, wire oh barbed wire like, yeah barbed wire exactly oh, and oh. a little bit of blood and so on so this is i love that you <laughs> <laughs> I love that you are actually taking so much of the traditional magician and zombifying it. That's that's the main idea. Yeah, you've got mm. the suit, and then you're like, okay, what would it look like if the magician wearing the suit that was performing got turned into a zombie in the middle of their performance? Like someone in the audience was bitten, they turned, and then they get on the stage and they bite the performer, and then the performer goes on performing as a zombie. Um, that's, that's, that's the great. idea. So the first uh, trouble I got was how can I connect the ability of handling cards and doing magic and doing techniques with the uncontrolled movements of a zombie? who might be not anymore able to do a card trick in any way. How do you realize that? So there always needs to be a big humanoid part inside the zombie, which is he's able to talk. Sometimes he's just walking around like, <laughs> but if you ask a question like, hey, call me a number between one and 10 and say, five. <laughs> So you get, an answer, you get an answer, you just gotta, gotta, gotta right. play around with it a little bit. So even the magician zombie is able to hold the deck of cards in a little different way, but he's able to. 
He is also able to perform techniques, which is absolutely necessary to do a good magic show, in his very own way. And the techniques changed. We applied so many changes to make it possible for someone who is so clownesque and 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 we found a way because a friend of mine suggested how how would you imagine to be a zombie on stage and doing magic and i said how do you imagine that and he said okay i got an idea so we drove to a german youth magic workshop where a bunch of uh, teenagers who were interested in magic had to sh uh, the chance to learn from professionals and uh, showing something on stage and get feedback and uh, criticism from professionals right. and other people it was wonderful uh, in germany it's called je kami jeder kann mitmachen which translates to everybody can join or everybody gets the chance to be on stage and showing something he can gotcha we had the idea in mind and we got on stage and my friend said in a normal voice because he's a normal magician actually we wanted to show you a cool card trick but we got a little accident behind stage um Jonas died. I'm very sorry for that, but we found a way to uh, make the show possible. Uh, applause for Jonas. And then I was joining the stage like, <laughs> like being the dead person and everybody was wondering what the hell is going to happen. And we just <laughs> thought a classic routine, a classic card routine being performed a little bit more funny because I was the <laughs> uncontrolled, uh, being weird. But we started, we get someone on stage and he had to pick a card. I was doing the card trick, the uh, spectator selected a card and he was remembering it and put it back into the deck and I believe I ate the cards or I threw them <laughs> in the air, something like that, I really, really don't know. And the card was gone. And uh, I didn't find the card, I didn't know what to do. So I <laughs> lifted Nico's cloth and he was still standing, completely tied up the same way, but he had only his uh, underpants on and I, patted him on his back and he opened his mouth and there was one folded card which came out i took it and we unfolded this and it was the spectator's card he had uh, wow. chosen a few moments before and it was so spontaneous we had the idea we had the technique we talked about it like half a day before what we wanted to try and that was the birth that was 2013 just as it said on on instagram and then wow. the amazing Nico and Jonas were born the magic, uh, magic man and the undead wow. magic man. <laughs> I love that. I awesome. just, that origin story is just as good as the first one you gave about learning to do magic. I mean, if, especially the fact that it was announced that, oh, Jonas died backstage. It's really sad, but we're finding a way to still do the show. The show <laughs> must go on. <laughs> completely dry there was no explanation what happened it's just Jonas died but we found a way don't worry does your zombie magician have a name so the persona he's still calling me actually Jonas because uh, recently we developed a whole lore a whole story how I became the magician and we made a promotional video where the audience when we have one uh, gets to see some kind of uh, news reporting about the tragic death of magic duo Nico and Jonas and nice. horrible, horrible, and so on and so on. And the friends uh, being interviewed it was so scary. <laughs> we did love it. And so on. There was <laughs> the law, what, what actually happened. And the people get to see that, and we get on stage, and the show starts. Yeah. Wow. I'm curious, like, what are some things that you've done? that really made a difference in this business now that you have becoming successful because it's so unique, but I'm curious, like what are the things that really actually worked? And you're like, wow, that worked well, that made a difference. This actually got us somewhere where we could start performing and making money and, and doing it successfully. We started to think about what kind of show do you, do you, want, to, do you want to present? So we decided to make a whole evening filling as it's, it's in germany abendfüllend i don't know how to say it. if there's an english word evening filling show which is about two or two and a half hours with a break mm -hmm. this is the classic wow. length of an evening filling show mm -hmm. so we thought about okay two and a half hours with break two persons okay what do we have as inventory so we started to look out what kind of tricks do we actually have from card tricks to, to bigger stuff, to a hand guillotine, as you can see yeah. there, where you put your hand <laughs> through it and zack and yeah, something like that. So we gathered and gathered and gathered and we thought, okay, 
So this is our inventory, our possibilities. We limited the possibilities, what can be seen on stage. And then we thought, okay, what can be zombified out of this? Mm. What can be turned in a routine where a zombie or the abilities of a zombie play any kind of role? So we decided to build a whole character around this zombie person who's who's being able to being electrocuted and electrifying and being a, a transmitter between two things to being able to eat everything we got a deal beforehand that whatever nico hands me like a card or whatever hands me, i have to eat it on stage yeah that's the deal and he can, he can give me rotten berries or anything i need to eat it that's the deal oh, because some of the reactions are so real so we started to work and to think what would a zombie do with this trick what could a zombie do with a spectator with the whole audience with nico alone with music and we started to brainstorm so many things and we started to have a whole show and i believe 2016 16 or 17 was the first the amazing nico and jonas show and we were so proud it was so trashy I huh. believe 80 to 90% of the things worked the other way hilariously uh, destroyed <laughs> by our excitement. <laughs> um, but we had fun, the people had fun, and um, that was the first of many, many shows we played right now. Wow. Like, do you practice every day? Is this something you have to do as a magician, or would you say you... you rehearse uh like a couple times a week or what's the process in that to become good enough to be a magician actually it's it's time it's time and dedication because i will, i can i can i can show you an example sure this trick here if i can you see the seven of hearts it's a the seven of hearts yeah yeah that's the seven of hearts and i do this and it's the seven of whoa <laughs> That was that was a How classic. That, <laughs> that was a classic color change, which was called snap change, and I saw that on a YouTube video when I was, I believe, twelve or thirteen years old, and I found an explanation video for it too, and I was breaking my fingers trying to do it, and I thought, okay, what is the way to learn this? I think it must be auto medication, just doing, 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 doing this all and all and all and over again. Which is why in every magic book you buy, the first rule is practice, practice, practice. Because you will be surprised what you can achieve if you try something a million times while watching TV, while lying in bed, while reading a book with one hand. And suddenly you got it. Wow. And you get up in front of a mirror and show yourself a trick for the first time. And it works. You see it with the eyes of the audience and you see how stunning does that look right now and you do it again and again and again and you get the confidence of going to someone and say hey i want to see what i can damn just because you took the time to practice it there's so many people trying to learn magic and buying dvds and buying finished tricks with a whole explanation it's way better to buy books or buy a deck of playing cards and just uh, messing around with it a little bit, you learn so much more than than just watching YouTube videos and over and over again. What would be a great magic book for people to start with? Oh, so for German or international people? <laughs> uh, both. Uh, if you have a yeah, if you have a German specific book for our German audience, however many they are, that'd be great. But for yeah. people around the world, so let's see. <laughs> Well, wow. You may have a few books, eh? <laughs> so and this is this is a small library, one of the smallest Sacrament, around my magician friends. But um, maybe there's uh, two or three books I can recommend because yeah. solely based on my experience. So what I got to learn recently uh, in my hands from my friend Nico, by the way, greetings, is Mac King and Mark Levy tricks with your head. Have you ever heard of Mac King? Mac King is the second best magic show in all of Vegas, according to Penn, T Penn and Tellers. And I actually really, really <laughs> like uh, Mac King. He's hilarious. He's a great comedy magician. If you haven't seen him, go check him out on YouTube and fool us and all that stuff. So, yes, Chris has heard of Matt King. Frank has <laughs> yes. not. Because Frank was not. Frank was a more on the actor and scare side, less than the, on the magic side. <laughs> Yeah, that is fine. But we we can all agree that uh, that Mac King is a brilliant person. And Tricks with Your Head of, is nothing else uh, than a book where he does tricks with 
his head. There's no other requisite or prop you need than your head. Oh. And just like mm. the uh, penetrating thing here is one good example. Where you put your finger through your cheek, yeah. To your yeah. cheek and so on and so on. There's so many things you, you laugh your butt off when you read it alone. <laughs> so that is, that is one thing. The other one I wanted to recommend is actually called Magic for Dummies. Uh, oh, wow. So you you guys actually know the four dummies uh, books, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, right? Oh, yeah. and it's Magic, big over here in America. That is the first issue. I think there are some others uh, already released, but the first issue of Magic for Dummies is one of the books I would take to a deserted island for two years if I if I if I had to choose because <laughs> wow. this is something you carry around wherever you go when you start to find out what kind of treasures this contains. This is brilliant. This is just brilliant. And the third and last I might suggest uh, for for Germans especially because this is the standard work uh, for for everyone who wants to get into magic. So recommendation for everyone. Jochen Zmeck is a German magician and he wrote the Handbook of Magic, das Handbuch der Magie, um, where he tries to explain a little bit about uh, history of, of magic, how, how, to, how to find your character, how to practice, how to get uh, to the audience, but also how to shuffle the deck, how to force a card, how to hold cards. It's everything. It's just the basic techniques. If you work through this book, then you can start to, to do the real, real good tricks. So this is the way to go. Handbook of Magic by Jochen Zmeck. Awesome. You said that, you know, you have to practice as a magician something sometimes a million times or like tons and tons and tons of times in order to master a technique. And I think that that's where I have heard this. Maybe you can confirm that being a, an effective magician is just being willing to do what other people would never consider doing like practicing something so many times that no one would believe you would have done it that many times to become good at it so you can learn a technique that no one would ever usually have thought of. Is, is that true? That is true. There's two things coming to my mind. First is, if you uh, book a magician for, let's say, a show for your, for your birthday party or something like that, or something bigger, and you pay another 600 or 700 euros for this show because it's a professional magician he has a lot of experience he does very 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 good tricks the audience loves it and you still wonder why is it so expensive because there's magicians out there out there doing shows for 200 euro 300 euros but you always need to remember that you're not paying for the experience this evening you're paying the magician all the time he invested yeah. to be able to do this trick you're paying him for all the cards he destroyed while trying to do so for yeah. all the stuff for all the experience you and the more experience a magician has and the more he can handle different situations when a trick goes wrong and when the audience is difficult and so on and so on then it gets more expensive because you pay for the experience and the certainty that you get a good professional magic show and that's what people forget. And the other thing is that whenever you ask a person who does uh, sports or who likes to sing or something like that, you also ask, why do you go to training three or four times a week? Isn't this exhausting? And you'd say, no, this is something I need right after work. This is something that gives me something, powering off, um, gaining a little muscles, feeling good about myself. And I said, yeah, and you're, you're doing this for years now, every week. Why? Why? Because I love it. And then I said, yeah, that's the same reason why I'm practicing how to hold a card or how to change a card for weeks and months and years because I love right. it, because in this moment, I am myself, I'm learning something, I'm doing something for myself, even if I'm never showing this anybody, this is for me. That's the, that's the reason why so many people wonder, wow, all that practicing, I can never do that. You do. <laughs> when you have at least one thing you like, then you do yeah. this. Isn't that the nerd brain too? Like that's what I think unifies so much of what I guess nerdpreneur is about, is that the definition of a nerd uh, and I'm curious on your definition of a nerd, but I mm. feel like it's someone who just gets obsessed about one or, or narrow focus and just gets deep on it, you know, like goes really far into something and practices and gets better. And, uh, and that nerd brain can really be utilized in a powerful yeah. way to get someone results to get someone where they want to go, turning their passion into, say, a business or becoming so good at something that you can actually charge people to experience it. 
Of course, being being able to charge people for it is uh, is actually a huge benefit because it pays the rent, it pays uh, for a full fridge. But on the other hand, I cannot imagine a single show I have done, whether it's being the Horror Nights, some some kind of acting stuff, or any magic trick or show I've ever played, I would have done it for free anytime because there's other kind of payment if you know yeah. what I mean, if you do those things. Yeah, the joy. I mean, the reasons that you got into it, you were talking about that, you know, the reason that you fell in love with performing magic and scaring, you know, that's also a great form of payment, but it does not fill the fridge, as you said. Yeah. And, and, and if you if you if you ask for my definition of a nerd, mm, I think it's a person, it's a passionate person who takes every kind of misstep or every kind of backstep he ever experienced without saying anything about it because there's so many people who get laughed about of what they're passionate about or who get laughed at what they're passionate about or being made fun of or just being asked why do you like these things i still remember my grandmother who said oh just dress like modern people and wear the stuff all the other <laughs> friends do and i said no i want my vintage stuff and it's fine and it's mine and this is what 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 makes me to the person i am and so is the things i like and everyone who knows me who wants to get in contact with me hey, it's jonas the magician it's never jonas it's just ah magician jonas ah jonas the magician it gets so connected that you can at one point say i'm a magic nerd as well as for zombies or playing billiards or whatever I like. Mm -hmm. So any person who has that kind of interest and never wants to explain it to anybody, does what he likes and whenever someone says, ah, this is unuseful or stop that or this is absolutely nonsense and he never accepts a no and says, no, I still want to do it because I love it. This is a nerd, I think. May I ask your definitions? Uh, yeah, that? well, first I just wanted to say that it's really cool that that the, I, you know, kind of what I heard from you that I liked so much was that people who continue on with something that they love, that they're passionate about, despite other people saying how, quote unquote, weird it seems or, quote unquote, useless it might be. The fact that we still keep doing it, it is useful to us because it satisfies, it fills a need, something that we can't get elsewhere and that we still do it. That is that is awesome. I really like that. If you were willing to do it for free, um, yeah. then you might have a shot at becoming good enough to do it for money. Ooh. Because uh, there's a lot. I, I, that's what really resonated for me out of what you said. I mean, I, I love the overcoming adversity and a lot of that. But I, I'll just say that I really think if you're willing to, if you want to do anything, like the same with music, right? Like if you talk to almost any musician, they're going to play their instrument for free, whether you want them to or not. But if they do that over and over and over again to the point where they do it better than 99% of people who ever played that instrument, then then, and only then, will they be able to charge for it. Anything that you do, you really have to be willing to do it for free for a long time. You can't be being driven by the money. And I think that's sort of my definition of a nerd is who's doing something not being driven by the money because if they are doing it for the money, you will get burned out. You mm -hmm. will stop and you won't have the passion to continue past the hard parts where you plateau or you need to really buckle down to get to a new level of growth to get past where other people have. You have to be doing it with your passion or for another reason than just I want to make lots of money at this. If yeah. you switch this, if you switch this whole to a business uh, business point of view, you can take out all the uh, hobby and art aspects, and it's like doing internship, unpaid internship after unpaid internship until you get yeah. a lot of experience to apply for a real job. There was times I was studying linguistics just for the purpose of not becoming a linguist, but using the semester breaks for uh, internships in radio stations. And my father said, oh, and why don't you apply for a job where you get money and take out some newspapers or do, do some bartendering and so on, earn some money. And I said, no, I want to get into how radio stations work, even if I get an unpaid internship and I got Right. four or five un unpaid internships and then right after uh right after university i applied for a job 
And they said, oh, you visited five uh, different radio stations, cool, maybe we want to get to know you better. And I said, oh yeah, it's paying off. One day, yeah. just be patient and yeah, find your, find your way. Because that's, that's your day job, that's your day, is uh, uh, as a radio host, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, for four years now, I'm working as a show host on a ra in a German private radio station in Berlin, and I really enjoy it. And never yeah. can imagine to do something, uh, doing something else uh, to earn my money. And I was asked so, so, so often if I can imagine to do the magic thing as full time job. And what I can see, this is something I wouldn't have the time and energy for because this is so, so much work to actually, to actually yeah. pay, pay your bills by doing magic. This is, this is something which sooner or later gets really... Yeah, <laughs> it's exhausting. I mean, being when you put on a character like a zombie, that is exhausting. It, yeah. it is. It is fun, but it is exhausting. If I would have imagined how many shows they're played, even in Las Vegas and so on, how these people do it, like the Blue Man Group, being being a part yeah. of the Blue Man Group, you apply the paint evening for evening for evening, 12 years, 15 years, and you do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Still ask the Blue Man Group if they like what they do. And I yeah. bet, bet, even uh, three quarters of them are saying, I absolutely love it even after 20 years or. This is a good example. Imagine the Blue Man Group, you experience this once and have you maybe the one of the best shows you have ever seen in your entire life. You saw the Blue Man Group, it was hilarious, you got photos, you tell the story to your grandchildren how you enjoy the Blue Man Group. <laughs> and these people do this every single day. Just yeah. turn the perspective, just think about it. They do this every single day and they still yeah. love it. How the hell do they do that? They need to love this. That's the only explanation. You need to be a nerd about, about acting, about uh, transporting emotions to an audience. Some people are born with it and it's great mm -hmm. to see how they're stuck. Are there times where it's really difficult to do what you need to do to be successful in your profession? Do you have techniques in which to flip the switch or change that around so that you can be the best version of yourself going into your profession? Yes, take always time and always, always have your own limits. If there is enough practicing, if, if, if there is so much failure that you can't reach this or that goal, just take your time, relax. Maybe you'll get back to it later, maybe not, but in this case, you don't need to sh to build up your anger about it or questioning yourself. Don't ruin your own passion because this is what you do if you only do stuff you, you, you cannot accomplish and you want to get better and you get better too fast. Take your time and if you take a break and say there's one month now where I'm not touching any playing cards, I'm not doing any magic, taking time for me, taking a vacation, doing whatever you want, but take time for you and get people around you who love you and who... Yeah. Don't forget to be a human being. This is something everybody needs to learn. I think artists mm. or not artists, if you're good with your own company, I think that's the key to solve many, many problems. Not all of them, but many. That's some good wisdom right there. I don't remember where I first heard that, but I, I have always loved that. I feel like you part. said that in like our first episode. I I, was that the thought you had in the first show? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that. Yeah, when we were interviewing our game, our board game designer, he also said the uh, very similar things. Was like, you know, you need to take a break. Especially with millennials, you don't have to always be productive. Like give ourselves a little bit of self-love, you know, and and care so that you can be strong enough or be healthy enough and energetic enough to go out and do the thing you want to do at the 100% yeah. level. And without that intention, you can easily burn out and not get anywhere. Yeah, and that's the same as any doctor would suggest you listen to your body. Gosh, that is so true. I uh, we might cut this, but I just wanted to share real quick that I felt that yesterday very much. I went to the gym for the first time in, in months and I lifted weights and I was like, oh my God, like I used to be able to do this, but my body's saying I shouldn't. So I guess I'll listen to my body. I guess I won't push myself too hard. But afterwards I was walking back home. I'm like, oh, I'm glad I listened to my body. And today I am so sore. <laughs> I'm so glad I stopped when I did because it would be way worse. I was talking with someone yesterday, literally, who was doing a lot of running. Uh, she said she had done six days in a row of running. 
and Ooh. then realized after six days in a row of running that like, why do my knees hurt? Why do my legs hurt? Why are my joints so messed up? And it's like, then her friend's like, you need a rest day. Don't you understand? Like, you can't just keep doing the same thing every single day and then not give your body a break from that. You're not built yeah. to do that. Even though it is healthy to run, listening to your body is really, really important. But there is something else there. Like, because I think there are people who don't push themselves enough. Right. And I think that's also a challenge. And I think there's a mental voice in their head that when there's any strain or something is hard, there's a sign in their heads that say, well, you should give up or you're not supposed to do this or you know, these other people who do this, it comes easy for them. Listening to your body is very different than I think listening to a negative voice in your mind. Quieting that voice in your mind that tells you to quit sometimes or to give up is actually valuable to push past that to the point of discomfort. It is. How do you know when to listen to your body versus listen to your head. Yes, I have an advice. Always remember the, uh, I don't know if you guys know that the spontaneous party syndrome. Have you ever heard about it? No, no. no that sounds... It's the thing that the best parties you visited in your life ever were those uh, where you decided spontaneously to go there. And the thing is, huh. if you're trying to achieve something and your mind is telling you now you need to get a little bit get a little farther right now okay you need to push yourself a little bit always remember when have there been times where this paid off why don't you just concentrate right now much more on this because you know it's rewarding look forward the reward which comes out of this right now and then push yourself a little further get practice and get comfortable and concentrate and Keep in mind why you do this, why you're taking your precious time right now to practice this. What is the outcome of this? Keep that in focus and remember the times it actually paid off. That is my advice. As far as, far as good lessons, what about the lessons from more so advice, the advice that you've gotten from others that ended up being bad. Um, it's, it was always that you need to be successful in life. You need to, uh, you need to start a family. You need to buy a house. You need to settle mm. down. You need to study. If you want to be successful, study engineering, uh, <laughs> go to army here and there. Just follow your freaking heart. That's all I can say about this because mm. uh, when, whenever, whenever you try to achieve something someone advises you because it made them successful if i get really let's say in in, in 20 years hypothetically the undead magician is known all over the world playing in las vegas everyone and i will be asked hey how did you achieve that and uh, what what would you give advice to others and i said yeah just follow your dreams and magic is the best way to earn money it would be horrible <laughs> because yeah. in this case I would, on the one hand, don't know how the, I got here <laughs> with, with always following my passion. Right. Is there anything that you do daily that really makes a difference in your success? Yes. I'm talking to myself and I let my inner child break out, like laughing uncontrollably, um, telling jokes, singing, citing the comedians I like with the jokes, playing movie lines just by myself, just get a, get the inspiration, just the, the weird thing about being passionate or something. Keep that alive. Do the things other would say, this guy's crazy, this is mental, why does he do that? This is something you need to do for yourself every day. Be silly. Feel like a, a dog on duty, a police dog who is finally, after a long day of hard work, allowed to play in a field and right. fetch, fetch the stick and, and that's what you need. And they said that's where the creative juices really live, is in that play, right? In that letting go. It's very hard to be rigidly creative, right? Like. I think even they've studied this, like it's a different way, brain wave that's going on in your head when you get into a creative state. Never forget to pat yourself on the, uh, on the back and say, there is days where there's no creativity flowing, where you don't right. also don't want to be creative in any way. You want to consume, you want to watch a series, you want to be on the other end, on the receiving part of, of art and creativity. And always tell yourself, there will be better days. 
Just be silly. I, I did want to ask, what are you especially nerdy about outside of your main profession? Okay, so I, I have a huge thing for antiques and old-fashioned clothing and... What was it called? Furniture, furniture, furniture. Well, I can see just even in your background, you have a lot of unique, cool stuff. Like, I feel like I'm talking to a magician just watching your yeah. background. You have this <laughs> wonderful globe in the background. You've got an axe. You have a guillotine. You have this little, like, house. And there's the always, valley. always, always cards flying around from what? here. It's, it's, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, the thing is, yes, uh, this is something I always love to have my room represent my personality. So you will always see nerd stuff from from Harley Quinn posters to, to cosplay swords hanging there, mm -hmm. props, my Lego, my antics, my globe, which is a bar that can be opened. And yes, and the two last last things which are actually um, mentional, mm -hmm. mentional uh, is billiards. I'm playing in a billiard club for 15 years now in a league. Oh, wow. So um, that's actually one passion I do also for getting my head off and doing a little bit of um, yeah. pool billiards. And a pin-up, pin-up art culture. I may do a reference to your other guest, Jade, you had. Uh, oh, JJ. JJ, JJ yeah. Art Creation, right? Um, and she's doing, a pin, she's drawing pin-ups for me. And I started to get into the fascination of how pin-up, bombshell, burlesque, art, every kind of feminism aspect, which, uh, was go with, go, which goes with it. Reading books about it by Dita Fontes and so on. Also having... Uh, just mentioning and showing you guys. Uh, one pin up on an anchor sitting here. Whoa, <laughs> that's a nice tattoo. And Dita Fontis on the other side. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. And I got uh, first row tickets for her Glamonetrix tour uh, where she will be in Berlin in April or May this year, I think. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at time here and uh, we've been, I mean, time has flown. So if you guys are all right with it let's transition to the next section all right let's do let's do these random rolls and and so i'll just give you a quick overview of what these are going to be like so we've got random rolls like i said you will roll a d100 um do you have an app okay i got a d100 and i got the roll again option great so we'll roll it you'll roll it three times and that will match up with a question a different question on our sheet here these are these are uh typically less serious questions okay um, wonderful first one is six okay if you had to be turned into a food what would it be i would be a toblerone chocolate bar oh. because i could make a lot of people happy <laughs> Uh, in the way that they break off into pieces. Exactly. Yeah. And they're <laughs> so, so delicious. <laughs> they are so delicious. You can't go wrong they with are good. All right, go ahead and roll another one, please. 61. Do you play d and I had once. So maybe that answers the question. How much D&D is too much D&D? How much D&D is too much D&D? Yeah. If your mom tells you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, roll one more, and let's see what the next one is. 73. I know that you're a big fan of Legos. So yes. what is a set of Legos that you are waiting for Legos to come out with? The Adams Family Mansion. No hesitation. Ooh. Exclamation mark. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That sounds so uh, right up your alley. I don't know how we yeah. that one. But and yes. you want to know why? Because there's the site www.legoideas.com where people can suggest own Lego ideas. And if it got enough support, I think uh, 10,000 is the limit, then it gets uh, into the official Lego review, whether it can be an official set or not. And there have been two exclamation mark attempts to make the Adams family happen and in this case, I only can say if any one of the listeners stumbles upon the support possibility of the Lego Adams mem uh, Adam Lego Adams family mansion to be realized, please just support because there have been so many attempts, but it didn't work once. <laughs> I'll have to go look and just upvote that. But that is great. <laughs> I like that. Great question, Frank. I really like the Lego tie-in. We should have more Lego questions. <laughs> we should. We should have more Lego questions. <laughs> Okay, so that wraps up the random rolls section, and we'll go to the next section, which is, we call it kind of a rapid fire. Now, these are quick, 
and kind of silly questions. So they will be short questions and you can provide short answers and we might go in more depth. What superpower would you want? Invisibility. As a magician, it feels appropriate. It does seem it? like. And guess how good you can scare people? Just say. <laughs> oh, I bet, right? This is on both sides. <laughs> no, of course. Totally. Um, all right. What about your. Hmm. Now, you shared a couple books with us on magic, but what would be your favorite non fiction book? I would have loved to say Robinson Crusoe because this is my favorite all-time book. And the idea that this just really happened to someone is so good that I go with Robinson Crusoe. Okay. Robinson Crusoe. Awesome. I haven't read that one. Is that a fiction? It is a fiction. It is a fiction by Daniel Daniel Defoe, but not so far from reality if you if you admit, because it's really well written. If you haven't read it, do it. It's a great. Okay, great I'll add it to my list. What's the best munchie or snack food? Cornflakes. There's nothing <laughs> better than any kind of cereal and cornflakes. Nothing tops that. Frosted or original? If I feel like frosted, I'm even adding more sugar if I want to. <laughs> if I go for the natural way and throwing some strawberries in it, then fine too. But I think I've, whenever I feel the need to eat something, Nothing beats the number of times I decided to go for a bowl of cereal. Yeah, the texture on good crunchy cereal is pretty satisfying. And you know what? Two months ago, there was opening a British American shop in Potsdam, and you get a pack of Captain Crunch originals for about nine euros. And I'm still trying to decide whether I should try them and other stuff like <laughs> Twinkies and Pop Tarts, other things I wanted to try and never had the chance. And you can do a lot with cornflakes. Like if you you can actually do cornflakes, uh, sorry, m marshmallows coated in cornflakes that are like baked. It's delicious. I don't know. I I had, I had a girlfriend whose aunt used to make them back when I was in my early twenties, and I love. Damn. Okay, gonna add that to my list because I love yeah. bacon. <laughs> yeah. Do you go to out to karaoke? And if so, what is your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> you really want me to answer that? Heck yeah! If you have one, yeah. Because I got high from Afro Man, because Ooh. this song stuck with a lot of memories and it's still got <laughs> to crowd pleaser. It's a crowd pleaser. Uh, I think we have to ask this one. If the zombie apocalypse happens, what's going to be your weapon of choice? Oh, I would say because uh, when I was a kid, I loved to fence and I even was in a fencing club. I would go some some good sword uh, weapon stuff mm. kind of thing because I think that will, I will enjoy that pretty much. So let's say a Spanish saber. <laughs> nice. Nice. What are your three favorite pizza toppings? Parmesan, serrano ham, rucola salad. I am so glad we asked a European this question yeah. because <laughs> I am so glad we branched away from the pepperoni, mushrooms, pineapple, ham, bacon. Like those are all good. Don't get me wrong. But I haven't been to Europe in a while and I love the European approach to pizza, specifically Italians. But I just <laughs> love that they all kind of share that. And I tell you, there isn't a single, there isn't a single pizza delivery service in Potsdam from Domino's to Cola Pizza to Smiley's Pizza, Hello Pizza, everything. And everyone offers this combination between Parmesan cheese, Serrano ham, and rucola salad. And it's all got different names, but you get it everywhere. And it's the best. How many cats is too many cats? There is never too many cats. Whoa. All right, we needed that answer. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> we have asked that to everybody so far. We have had the widest range of answers uh, out of all the questions. It's hilarious. We've had people say, two and then we've had people go 15 you now hold the record there is never too many cats that's awesome wow i love i love cats there's nothing more to add i really really love cats <laughs> so we were just talking about cereal and cornflakes but now i gotta know would you say that a cereal is a soup no because even the chewable parts of a soup are never as hard as cereal, which makes them exclusively distinctive. I like that answer, but I also really got to say there's, what is it, a tostada soup? 
um, that has chips in it. I feel I feel like that's a garnish, though. It is a garnish in this case. Do you know any soup where the basic ingredient is crunchy? Uh, you're you're from... so right. Like the appeal of, of of a cereal is the crunch. Like because yeah. like if it's if if you get soupy cereal, you're not happy. Which is which which yeah which is which is the question. If you if you let stand that for two hours, will it become a soup? And you can talk uh, about temperature or something like that, but maybe oh, it's a soup. This this is good. I I was playing devil's advocate, but I really wanted <laughs> there to be a difference, and now I'm really glad that 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 you came up with that definition because that puts <laughs> some sense of order in my life. So probably my last question here, because I have to ask this to just about everybody: Star Trek or Star Wars? Back to the Future. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to the Future is amazing. I've never seen in my inter entire 29 years on this planet a single movie from Star Wars, a single episode from Star Trek, not even Stargate or anything related. And I don't really know w with what kind of emotion I need to transport that question, but I think it's just the way it is. I never get wow. any passion or interest in these things, but I love time, I love theory of time, I love reading everything about time and time travel. So, awesome. back to the future all the way. <laughs> wow, kind of in shock right now that you've never seen any episode or And you movie. don't know how many people have said to me that they're in absolute shock. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> It is, maybe one day, and I promise it myself, because there's a list, I also got a bucket list with books to read, with movies to watch, and there will uh, also yeah. be one day um, a binge watching of the whole Star Wars series. Yeah, I, I will say, uh, if you like time, Star Trek is going to be way more up your alley than Star Wars. That's my only plug for Star Trek. <laughs> I love zombies and I've never seen a single episode of uh, The Walking Dead because I was not interested in it from the oh. very start. Oh. I got so many movies I like and I recommend, but I never thought I need to get to know this. No, What's no. your favorite zombie oh. movie? Oh, Fido. Do you know Fido? No. Yes. Um, how is the how's the actress called uh, which plays Trinity in the in the in the Oh, um God. I know who's that who that is. Carrie uh, Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss. It's a zombie movie which plays in the 50s with Carrie Ann Moss as a mother of a child and the world they live in suffered from a zombie apocalypse and all the towns in the 50s are surrounded by gates and there's the wild zone outside where the zombies roam and those people try to spend a normal life. And a mad scientist developed a, a, a collar which makes the zombies tameable and slaves for the households and friendly. And the whole plot is just a bunch of people living in the 50s with zombie pets uh, until some kind of disaster needs to break out, of course, just for the plot. But Fido is one of the one of the treasures. Nobody knows whenever I whenever I suggest it. Maybe open the tub and and yeah. No, I just found it and <laughs> it like, does look great. It is hilarious. Like I love Lucy with the zombies. That sounds mm -hmm. awesome. And you gotta yeah. see Carrie and Carrie and Moss in a petticoat. And if you you got a crush on her, you're gonna be satisfied. <laughs> She's awesome. Uh, Jonas, this has been so awesome. Where can people find you, support you, potentially hire you for zombie magic shows or to just scare them? <laughs> okay, before I list up every single possibility, I might just suggest a pretty simple solution. Just go to uh, uh, Instagram, to Facebook, or to Google, or a search engine of your choice, and just look for Zauber Zombie. Maybe you guys can uh, write that down into the comments, into the info section, or whatever. But with with Zauber Zombie, also Zauber Zombie, the German name for it, you gotta find it uh, to left and right in the center. And that's spelled Z A U B E R, and then the word zombie. Genau, yeah, Sauber yeah. is the German word for magic, Zaubern, Sauber. Oh, Got it. Sauber zombie is the, the magic zombie, something like that, yes. Nice. Yeah, and you and your buddy Nico, you do these shows together. That's so we cool. still we're, we're still doing the shows together. We got a little break right now because of Corona, but we're mm -hmm. still planning to play the show traditionally on the uh, Halloween day, on the... 
31st right. of October, uh, always in the same theater in Germany. Um, but all the infos are going to land on our Instagram and Facebook pages and people can reach out, can ask questions and also suggest us when they got the possibility to have a show to play for us, to be part of it, to travel around, to, to present ourselves. Reach out, we will be happy about it. Do you do shows in English or is it only in German? We have never done it, but from my personal point of view right now, I can imagine it very well. And I think Nico's English is solid as well. So just go for it. We make yeah. everything possible. Perfect. Even if he plays silent just with music, will be hilarious too. <laughs> <That'd> be <laughs> awesome. Anything else? Well, on the first hand, I want to thank you for the chance. And I think the best outcome out of this would be glad yeah. to get in contact with people who are interested in doing doing zombie makeup, doing card tricks, having a Zoom conference or a discussion via Skype or Discord or about magic in general. Yeah, just networking, getting to know people. This is what keeps the keeps the keeps the creativity driving because yeah. you, you have you always have a limit with creativity. There's always a saying, oh it's a limitless creativity. No, it needs to come from somewhere. It's other people. I just wanted to say your Instagram is a great place where people are, where you've put up some pictures of other creative minds that you've worked with. And those pictures look great, by the way. Yeah. The Captain Salazar outfit is also mine. I don't know if it's any, any visible nice. because on the Instagram side, yeah, you can see some other cosplays I do because uh, generally when in Movie Park Germany, there will be other things beside the Horror Nights uh, where you get the chance to dress up as other characters and the results can be seen on the Instagram page too. I was, yeah, I was wondering about that zombie captain. Yeah, that was really cool. That is Captain Salazar from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 5, played by Javier Badiem. Have you seen yeah. the, fifth, the fifth part? No, yeah. I kind of gave up on the Pirates <sighs> franchise after the third one. You can see, and I, I'm, I'm celebrating all five of them. And uh, many people stopped uh, even after the third uh, movie yeah. uh, at World's End. And, uh, but do it. Javier Badiem is playing a brilliant okay. role here. Yeah. Okay. Or a suggestion. Yeah, nice. Thank you. For listening to Nerdpreneur. Be sure to subscribe wherever you found us and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Every review helps our show grow. You can follow and chat with us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Nerdpreneur Podcast. Nerdpreneur is a labor of passion, and Chris and I would love to keep this thing going. So if you want us to continue making content, you can support us by going to patreon.com forward slash nerdpreneur and become a member of the board. Members of the board get shout outs, they can submit rapid fire questions, they get behind the scenes peeks, and we record super fun and valuable content exclusive to our board members. We love all of you nerds. Keep it nerdy. Nerdpreneur, you know I love my work. Life's a game, so I'ma take my turn. Nerds deserve to put the passion first, so let them rap it first so they can all be heard.